Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a very new game as of when I recorded this, and I wanted to ask the question, is it worth buying? Now this series, if you followed my other channel, Degenerate J, which is larger than, that, than this channel, I guess, and I spun this one off from that, this series is basically answering that question. I take a look at games, usually they're newer, and I kind of ask the question, is this worth your money? Is it worth playing? Is it worth your time, essentially? Now these are miniature reviews, we're not going to tackle every in-depth thing, and I want to say very quickly that I'm going to avoid heavy story spoilers and just take a look at the first few hours of the game to show you some of the stuff you do in the first few hours of the game and some of the things I actually love about this game because this game, I truly believe, is one of the better games I've played in recent years and it has a lot going for it. Now, before we hop further into the video, if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. I appreciate you very much trying to grow this channel over time. And also, if you want to help support this channel, I'll you know let you know about some things at the end. But we do have a Fortnite creator code, which is DJAY123, which helps us out a ton. Now, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is obviously the second in the Final Fantasy remake series. You could say it's the third because there was also the Crisis Core remake, but it's kind of iffy because you don't necessarily have to play that game to play this. It's sort of a prequel to everything. I do think though that it benefits playing this game to have played Final Fantasy VII games before this. There is actually a, you know, the story so far type thing of what happened in the previous game that you can actually get a recap on the main menu. But honestly, I think that at bare minimum to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you pretty much had to have played Remake. I'm sure somebody out there is playing Rebirth and having a wonderful time without playing Remake, but a lot of the character dynamics, a lot of the relationships, a lot of the how they actually got to where they are is not something that you can easily sum up in a couple minute cutscene and then be on your way. It was a pretty in-depth game in Midgar, and I honestly think it's worth people's time. That said, the Final Fantasy VII Remake timeline is going to be hard to pin down with, you know, subjective opinions because until the story is complete, there's a lot of things left up in the air, as in, how did we really get here? Is this really a new timeline or is it overriding the old one? Because this remake series is not just a one-for-one -one remake. This is taking one game, which was Final Fantasy VII, largely expanding the ideas and mechanics into multiple games, and it gives you a lot of glimpses into parts of the world that weren't necessarily explored heavily in the original Final Fantasy VII. That said, I've personally found the more Final Fantasy VII games you've played before this, the better. You know, Final Fantasy VII Remake makes some sly nods and references to older Final Fantasy VII games like the original and spin-offs, so obviously that is the same here. That said, just as a video game on its own, even without that baggage behind it, this game is really, really fun. Now, this game is much more free roam based than the previous Final Fantasy VII Remake game, and by that I just mean Remake, not the Crisis Core one, have to clarify, but it's also still linear enough in the sense that it is a very curated story. This isn't like so open world that all of the stories and characters you encounter feel meaningless. You know, it's it's not suffering from big game syndrome in my opinion, but it is a very, very large game. Now, I have seen some complaints from people about there being too many side quests, that it's very easy to neglect the main story. While that is true, all of the side stuff I've done for the most part has been very engaging. It's been very fun. It's actually opened up new lore and story bits about the world that I didn't even know from the original Final Fantasy VII. They've actually gone out of their way with things like the assessing ability or even doing intel, which are mechanics in the game, where you can actually learn in-depth lore about different monsters you fight, different bosses, creatures, and even areas that weren't necessarily easy or at all findable in the original game. Like these are things where you would just visit a town, you'd get a couple of lines of dialogue from some NPCs walking around the town that you can miss, and that would be it. And while you still can get all of that stuff in this game, you also can actually go around 
find intel, and actually learn the history of the land that you're in, and interact with characters that you never would have even met in the original Final Fantasy VII game. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, there was a prioritization on story and on exploration, but it was much more contained. In this game, there still is that emphasis on story, but the exploration is widened to a massive scope into more of a free-roaming game, and you're actually able to interact with characters more independently as well. You're able to interact with, say, Tifa or Aerith, and build up a relationship level in order to affect portions of the story. If your party members think you're a huge jerk, that's going to affect parts of the story, whereas if they really like you, that's going to affect different parts of the story. I actually thought this was really cool because this isn't something that Remake did at all, and while it was a feature in the original Final Fantasy VII, it didn't actually affect much. It's worth mentioning that the original Final Fantasy VII is probably in my top five favorite video games of all time. I think it's an amazing RPG, I think it has a wonderful world, amazing story, a beautiful cast of characters, and of course an awesome soundtrack and really fun gameplay in the combat. But the combat in the remake timeline is a little different. While it isn't button mashy or anything like that, it's not just sit in a line and click when your gauge fills, it is now a little bit more of a mixture of that and Kingdom Hearts, I would say, where you're actually doing things in almost a real-time combat. I think they did a very good job with that, but that said, it is different than the original game, just like Remake was. Now, personally, as someone who grew up as a die-hard fan of the original Final Fantasy VII, I do hope at some point we still get just a one-for-one -one Final Fantasy VII remaster of some kind, other than what the community has done on PC with mods and really cool tools there. But that said, I really like the new direction they've been taking the game. It's also not a new direction in terms of updated for a modern audience, which is one of the things that I think people really dread to hear when they play video games. This is not some super, you know, toned down game where it's been watered down a ton by time and by, I would say, honestly, certain amounts of activism or certain amounts of social pressure. It just feels like it's Final Fantasy VII's world and characters and history and story, but with some different types of gameplay. And I actually really appreciate that. Even things like the Chocobo riding is a little different and that doesn't mean it's better, but it's just fun to actually get on a chocobo and ride around the world and go to an area in full 3D modern day technology graphics and be like, hey, I remember that place from back when I played this game that came out in the 90s. Wow, that looks a lot different. Wow, there's details here. You know, that kind of stuff is really cool. I, I think that they expanded this world in such a special and beautiful way, and I really do love how they did it. That said, it's not a perfect game. There are a couple things I do want to point out. First is that the graphics mode on this game, I personally think is pretty bad. Now there is a graphics quality mode and there is a graphical performance mode. The performance mode does make the game a little blurrier. And I know to some people, they think that's frustrating. That said, the graphics mode that prioritizes fidelity makes the game run at 30 FPS or below, which if it was a steady 30 FPS fully through, I would definitely want that, but it's not. The game from the opening is a little jittery on that mode, and the game starts on that mode. It starts on its more quality-based mode. You actually have to go into the options on the main menu before you even start a new save file to change that to performance. Otherwise, even the intro cutscene is kind of jittery. It's kind of stuttery. And for me, that bothered me. Now, maybe if you're playing it on a really small screen, it's not something you're gonna notice. I don't personally know but I noticed it a lot, and it even gets worse when you go out into the open world and start doing combat. That said, I thought performance mode runs smooth as butter. Yes, it's not quite as clear, it's not quite as high quality image, but this game feels to me like they were pushing the performance of the game a bit, and it either needed a little more optimization for its graphical mode, or it should have just toned back its visuals in general, to aim for higher performance. Because the graphical fidelity mode, as of when I recorded this without any patch, because I don't know if they'll patch it or not, it's not good, and I found it distracting. I did not find that for the performance mode, but it's something I wanna draw attention to because I think that's the best way you can enjoy the game, is by playing it in performance mode instead of having to worry about jitter and stutter during gameplay, cutscenes, free roam, 
combat. It's pretty much in whatever you're gonna do. And that bothered me personally. In an also smaller real world issue, there were a lot of problems around this game's launch, at least in North America. Now there was a normal version of the game, there was also a deluxe edition, there was a digital deluxe edition, and then of course there was a collector's edition. My personal opinion of these different editions is that however you want to spend your money is up to you. But that said, when it comes to single player story driven games, I want that game preserved in some way. I would like a disc and I would like the game to be pretty good on disc. This game is pretty good on disc, other than the graphics problem that I mentioned, but there was a lot of bonus content at launch locked behind bigger editions of the game. And you might say, well, Jay, that's normal nowadays. Well, first off, it sucks that it's normal. And second off, it's not really a fair system because for people to get the deluxe edition of the game that came for, you know, with several different things, including a steel book, they had to pay a little bit more money, sure, but they had to pre-order that because it was not available at launch. And you might think, well, Jay, why didn't you pre-order it? Well, here's the thing, people did pre-order it and their pre-orders got canceled. Many different venues online and in real life canceled pre-orders around this game because not enough copies were actually made outside of just the Square Enix store, which who knows if those all got delivered or not. But I do know that a lot of people had their pre-orders canceled for the deluxe edition, and that really, really sucks. I don't know if that same thing affected the collector's edition, but I do know that for what you got extra with the collector's edition, the price was pretty hefty. It was quite a bit for that version of the game. And you might think, okay, well then I will just get the normal version of the game physically on disc and I will buy the deluxe upgrade. Unless this is changed after I record this, you have to own the digital version of the game in order to upgrade to the digital deluxe edition, which actually has materia behind it for summons to actually bring in summonable characters that you can't use right now in game unless you did that. Now, later on after the remake game came out, all of that stuff became free like six months out, but I personally think that that's a bit of a slap in the face to fans who waited years and years for these games. These games are beautiful, they're fun, they're packed with so much heart and goodness, but to not only have so many people get their pre-orders canceled, but to also have to get very specific editions of the game, some of which were digital only, and with no option to upgrade once you buy it in order to get certain things, that's just kind of a shitty business practice. I don't like that, I will never like that. I don't care if every game under the sun does it, I will still call it a bad business practice and, and just a poor will way to treat people. All of that said, I already listed the positives of this game. I definitely think it's worth buying at the very least the base edition of the game, but it really does rely a bit on having played previous Final Fantasy VII games. I personally don't think this is a good jumping on point where you can just pick the game up and be like, well, I've never played Final Fantasy VII, don't have any idea who any of these people are, time to start Rebirth. I personally don't think that that's going to be a great way to enjoy the game. These games very much built off of each other, and if it's going where I think it's going right now, it seems like this is also going to build off of the old timeline as well of the games that were released from the 90s through the mid 2000s. Now, it doesn't seem like you needed to play those games to enjoy this, but I certainly think you needed to play Final Fantasy VII Remake at the very least to get the most out of this game. Overall, I love the game. I have a hard time putting it down. I'm enjoying it a lot and I'm having a really, really fun time, but there are a few things that I wish had been worked out before launch and it bums me out a little bit. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I cover things like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, Soulsborne, the Elder Scrolls games, Fallout. I've recently been talking some about Stellar Blades, so this channel is a fun place for all kinds of stuff like that. And we also do have ways to support the channel, including our own store, CosmoBunny.shop. My wife, Jill, actually makes wonderful resin coasters, keychains, trays, all kinds of fun stuff here that is from repurposed, damaged manga and comic books. So we take those things from local stores, they give them to us or sell them to us very cheap, and we actually change them. We change them into, uh, into fun things for your house that you can use that can stick around for a very, very long time. And then we recycle the rest of the paper after reusing the part that we want to reuse. Of course, as well, there is the Fortnite creator code DJAY123, and that also works as a discount code for our store, CosmoBunny.shop. 
I hope to see you in the future. If you want to check out my other channels, they are all in the description. I have Degenerate J, I have Degenerate Plays, which is a Let's Play channel. My wife has a channel, Magical Jill. Lots of stuff down there I hope you'll check out. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.